This is a nuclear reactor being switched on. I always thought that the blue light came from something pretty ordinary like a regular light bulb glowing, but I was wrong. When I learned that the blue glow comes from particles being accelerated through the water faster than light, it blew my mind so much that I started talking without moving my lips and then launched into a rabbit hole of reading more about this. When I was in fifth grade, the school had a wall with a bunch of questions printed out that didn't come with any answers. One of those questions was what would happen if you were in a car driving at the speed of light and then switched your headlights on? I never got a good answer, but the one thing that everybody told me was that nothing can move faster than light. And it was decades later before I found out that this just isn't true. It turns out that what we're really talking about is the speed of causality, the maximum rate at which any information can move through the universe. It's the ultimate speed limit. Nothing can affect or move or communicate with anything else faster than the speed of causality. In completely empty space, light does move at the speed of causality, but that's not really relevant for most of us. As you may have noticed, we don't live in empty space. Matter is all around us, so most of us never get to experience, even once in our lives, light that's moving at its maximum speed. So it's a bit silly that we all think about it that way. It's a bit like pointing at a car driving at the speed limit and saying nobody is allowed to move faster than that car. That might be true, but is that really the best way to explain it? The car's speed probably will eventually change, and when it does, the speed limit doesn't change with it. The car will slow down at some point, and so will light, and that has significant effects on the world around us. What makes a straw in a glass of water bend? The classic answer is that you're seeing refraction. Light is bending as it travels through water, distorting the image. But what causes refraction? Light traveling through water moves 25% slower than it does through space, and Snell's law shows us that the amount of refraction is related to how much light slows down as it moves from one material to another. But what makes this diamond sparkle? It's a similar story. No common material slows light quite like a diamond does. Moving at less than half of its full speed, light in a diamond is very heavily refracted, breaking it apart into a brilliant dance made up of all the colors of the rainbow. Fiber optic cables provide lightning fast communication across the world, but despite using light to carry the signal, the signal only travels about 65% of the speed of light through the cable. If we maybe instead used lasers inside vacuum tubes that went straight through the earth to avoid curvature problems, you could have a light speed internet connection to win that Rocket League match, but that doesn't seem very likely to happen. E equals MC squared is the most famous equation ever. E energy, e equals m mass times c, the speed of light squared. But something doesn't fit the pattern there. Instead of using l for the speed of light, it uses a mysterious c instead, and we all just say the speed of light to make it easier to understand. E equals mc squared is a bit like the speed of light. It's something that we all assume to just be true, but is it? In his famous E equals mc squared paper, Einstein presented a lot of math, but none of it was E equals mc squared. He never mentioned that form formula until he presented it in an article over 40 years later. In it, he said it is customary to express the equivalence of mass and energy, though somewhat inexactly, by the formula E equals mc squared. In that paper, he painted it as being intended as an explanation for a general reader by analogy. That's not to say that E equals mc squared is wrong. It's not. But like many other things, it is a massive oversimplification of a concept that is way more complicated than than most of us really care to dive into. Einstein's work often complicates things. For all of this, we're talking about speeds from our perspective to an actual photon moving at the speed of light. Things get really weird. The photon itself experiences zero seconds passing, even if it's been traveling for billions of years. And to that photon, the distance from where it started to where it hits your eyeballs is not billions of light years. There is no distance. It's already arrived before it had time to leave. The moment that it's born and the moment that it dies are one and the same to it. General relativity is really weird. When an airplane breaks the sound barrier, its sound waves pile up and produce a sonic boom. The same thing happens with light. Inside a specialized setup, this laser is being fired through CO2 gas, creating not a sonic boom, 
but a photonic boom. This is also a general explanation for what we're seeing inside a nuclear reactor. Charged particles being emitted from the core are traveling faster than the rate at which light moves through the water. The blue glow comes from the countless photonic booms that erupt as a result. I find it curious and terrifying whenever I find out about a concept that is really nuanced that I've always just taken at face value. To be honest, I want to be right all the time, not because everything that I already believe believe happens to be true, but because I managed to discover that I was wrong about something and then changed my beliefs to match. Things like this make me wonder, what else am I missing?